Okay. Hi, everyone, and uh, good morning, and thank you for having me on for the introduction. So my name is Giacomo Aliata. I'm a PhD student. I'm, I'm here to present uh, the work of uh, my colleague Yu Chen Yang and, and myself under the supervision of Professor Sarah Kunderdine. And this project is part of the larger project narratives from the long tail, transforming access to audiovisual archives. And it's the main goal of this project is to find new ways to access large audiovisual archives. And for my thesis, at least, it's specific toward toward casual access, meaning people that don't necessarily have lots of expertise on a specific topic, how can they still access and benefits for this from large audiovisual archives. This is because in these last decades we've seen a mass digitization of audiovisual archives, in particular with broadcasting companies. In the UK, for instance, the BBC has already more than one million hours of footage, and in Switzerland, with the Radio Television Suisse, RTS, the main French-speaking broadcasting company, it's already more than 200,000 uh, hours. So we need new modes of access to those larger kinds. And as a first step in this project, one of the things we're looking at is at, uh, specifically the metadata that we have, and in this case, for the RTS. So before diving into the RTS archive itself, just a few words on why audiovisual archives are so important today. And I would say that audiovisual archives are one of the best ways to preserve our culture, of, of, or at least since video exists, of course. In this case, for instance, with the RTS, we can see that it's helpful to record specific events or uh, historical monuments that perhaps no longer exist today, or also local festivities, festivals, those kinds of events that are well recorded with audiovisual uh, recordings. So specifically to the RTS, for instance, we have, we're dealing with more than 500K uh, videos. And uh, for the metadata itself, we are, mo of course, there is lots of technical metadata. Of, it's a broadcasting company. We're not really using that. Uh, but we do have three text descriptions, high-level categories. And as you can see on the graph, uh, it's in French, but it's mostly about news, as you might expect. Uh, and then a vari variety of tags, mo mostly tags about subjects of the videos, topics tags, uh, geographical tags about locations, cities, countries, as well as entity tags, so named people or organizations, uh, sports team, the, those kinds of elements. And as we can see with the ca high level categories, there's a lot, lot, of, lot of videos in one single category, so it's very hard to use only those categories to make sense of the archive. Uh, if one search for like news, it, it's gonna get 100, like 175,000 videos. You can't do that much with that. So we decided to use the tags to uh, go further. And this is where we encountered several challenges. First of all, of course, there is a potential lack of homogeneity in the archival process. It's important to note that RTS is being a broadcasting, co broadcasting company. Their main goal is not to produce a well-created uh, cultural archive, of course, it's primarily for their own uh, for their own use. And furthermore, it's a process that changed over time, and so we can expect a, a different uh, in the archival process over the decades. There's a lack of deserts, so the tags are not very controlled. And there's also the issue of missing data. As you can see in the graph, a lot of actually of the videos do not have tags at all. For this specific work, we don't really consider this aspect, but uh, in, in future works, we will address that. So the goal was to extract structured knowledge, and there are further limitations if we only use uh, the provided metadata, mainly because while well, tags are, in a, in a sense, only s s just inst instances of text. We can, for instance, for instance look at the co-occurrences of the most common tags in the art archive, and uh, surprisingly, we will get, of course, Switzerland, as well as the main cities as uh, the name, uh, about as the locations, while for the people, well, unsurprisingly, there is Roger Federer uh, on the bottom, for instance. But in a sense, that's pretty much it, if we only work with tags. We also tried uh, some clustering uh, using bag of words or TF-IDF or even uh, topic modeling, but we didn't get anything interesting on that. So we decided to uh, resort to an external uh, database, the well-known Wikidata, mainly because it's one of the biggest, if not the bit largest, um, uh, collection of information uh, freely av available. And our idea was to link the tags to the Wikidata entity so that we could then extract lots of more information. 
we uh, done that on two levels. Uh, the first one, perhaps a bit more naive approach in which we directly link the tags to Wikidata entities. Of course, for those we don't have any sort of context is that if the tag is Lausanne, for instance, uh, it might actually be about the team, the football team of Lausanne, or more likely to, uh, we hope at least to, uh, that it's the case to actually the city. So out of uh, more or less 1,200 uh, tw uh, 1, uh, tags combining geographical entity tags, we got a little more than 10,000 uh, Wikidata entities, so quite a lot there. And then we also extracted new Wikidata entities from the free text descriptions. In, which, in this case, we can use entity disambiguation techniques to actually hopefully get the right uh, Wikidata entities. And out of a sample of 1,500 uh, the sports videos, we extracted uh, 5,000 more Wikidata entities. So we were quite uh, happy about that. And the idea is that with this augmentation of the metadata, there's lots of stuff that we can then do. do. For instance, the first thing we've looked at is ge the geographical coordinates, specifically, of course, for the locations. We extract the geographical uh, coordinates and we, we plot them on a map uh, in this case of the board uh, focused on Switzerland, we can see that it's mostly about the French-speaking part, being RTS about the French-speaking uh, broadcasting company, and of course it's uh, mostly about the larger cities. So here we can see already, we can start to see uh, some of the biases with metadata, in which we, the, we only record the biggest information, largest information, and we of course gonna lose lots of uh, actual information. For the people themselves, we can look, for instance, uh, for the uh, entities that have the property, property uh, human, we can look at where they're from, of course, mostly Switzerland, as well as France, and then the US, Germany, United Kingdom. And then we can also look at their occupation. And uh, funny enough, and perhaps not that surprising, we get mostly politicians and football players. Uh, so I don't know what that, that tells us about uh, culture, but that's what we get, at least for the RTS. So, to conclude this, I would say that this is a new way to look at the RTS, RTS archive and on multiple levels. Of course, it's first about to analyze the collection itself to understand uh, what has been recorded over time. An extension to that is potentially to study Swiss history, at least recent Swiss history, through the RTS archive. It's going to be a biased view, of course, of the, of the recent, uh, recent Swiss history, but that's, in a sense, all the point of, the, of what, that kind of research. And then, and that's actually what we're going to focus more on, we're focusing more on the laboratory of experimental museology, is to develop new modes of access for both casual and expert audiences to these kinds of large archives. Now that we have linked it to the Wikidata entities, for instance, it's much easier to find, for instance, all the political fi figures, and you don't need to know about the who are those pol political figures, even who are the most important political figures. You can just search for political figures, and that, now you can get that. Now, there, this is still a work in progress, and so this is only the first step, uh, perhaps also a quite, kind of naive step. Uh, the next one is, and that, what, that's what we're gonna do, we're going to do uh, right now, actually, is to transcribe the audio from the videos with speech text technologies, namely Whisper AI. And this will allow us to get lots, for, lots of more entities and also on a more granular, granular level. It's not gonna be on the level of the full video, but for instance at the sentence level or like every clip that we can extract. And we can even uh, le leverage large language models to automatically parse those transcribed text. Then of course it's a question of do we have the money to uh, uh, get the best ones such as GPT-4 or are open source models good enough? And that's one of the uh, other issues that we're gonna need to evaluate and to assess. So a short bibliography here. And just to conclude, uh, just to advertise that we're holding a series of event uh, at Lausanne, uh, TPFL, at the end of September. Uh, here you can find more information on, the, on our webpage and also on the web app uh, about new parties for accessing and creating audiovisual collections. Thank you very much.